Hello, hi everybody. Lovely to have you all joining us. Um, say hi in the chat, let me know if there's any uh, issues with the sound or anything like that. But in general, I'm very excited to get started. Um, so uh, today obviously is our launch day for the Polkadot X Encode Hackathon. Um, so to just give you an idea of what um, we'll run through today, um, we'll just very quickly go through all of the details about you know, the, the hack, upcoming workshops, exciting bounty information, and we've got our partners joining us to um, share that with you. And uh, then we have a workshop which will start at 6 p.m. UK time. So that's half an hour after the launch um, where we will be hearing from Dennis Zoma. So lots going on, um, very exciting. Uh, thank you for the slide compliments in the, in the chat there. Um, yes, so looking forward to it very much. Um, without further ado, let's get started. Okay. All right, so to introduce myself, um, I'm Emma, I'm going to be your program manager, and this basically means that I am your port of call for all things Hackathon, so I can help you get the technical information you need, I can help you get the information about deadlines and things you can build, and I'm just generally here to support you if you've got any questions. Um, please do give me a follow on Twitter, I will put a... Um, little yeah qr code up for you this is just a really good way um to stay in touch um i'll be putting loads of updates on there and you can um send me some messages um about what you're building i'd really love to hear i hope you're ex as excited as i am about this um but yeah do feel free to give me a quick follow um and yeah we can keep in touch over the next four weeks Clara has helpfully dropped a link as well. Okay, so to just give you a little bit of information about what ENCODE Club is, we are a web free education community. And this essentially means that we are trying to help support um, developers to learn, build and find their career path in emerging tech. So we're really about helping people of all levels find their way through web three, starting with, you know, the basics of, um, web through knowledge all the way up to our talent which helps find people jobs and this happens kind of through lots of different types of programs and stages so we've got our educate series and our boot camps which are much more guided um, sessions which give you the opportunity to learn the ropes in loads of different things so things like solidity zk um, then we've got what you guys are involved with now we've got our hackathon um, which is just an exciting way to foster people's creativity in the Web3 space, um, get people building with our sponsors and our partners, um, and really bring some attention to you know, the, the innovation that's happening in the Web3 world. And um, often we follow those with accelerators, uh, which are a great opportunity to build um, up the projects that have come out of our hackathons and really get them to the next stage, have them seen by um potential investors um and just build up people's confidence in terms of kind of um pitching and showing off um the things that they can do and then finally of course we've got our recruitment arm so this is our talent team who help to match um our developers to jobs which you know can can support them and suit them and that they can really contribute to um, so we do a lot um, but I'm very excited to welcome you guys to our hackathon today, which is obviously um, my area of expertise. Um, so yes, as I have mentioned, it's a four week hackathon, completely online. Um, and I will be here to kind of provide you with uh, support, show you the ropes throughout the period. But in the first few weeks, that's kind of our more active period in terms of, we have um, a few workshops from our partners, which should be really exciting. Um, and then we also um, have constant support from them and from me in terms of both kind of technical and practical things. Um, so yes, our title sponsor is Polkadot, very exciting. Um, unfortunately, they won't be able to be with us today, but I will be letting you know about their bounties. Um, so um, in the meantime, I would love to welcome one of my colleagues, Omji Park, 
who will come up on stage in a moment and just offer some words of support for you all. There she is. <laughs> Hello, hello. So very exciting moment. And I can see like uh, excitement in the crowd as well. Everyone, hi. I can see some familiar names and new names. Very excited to see everyone. Um, for some of you, perhaps you already know that like we have been, you know, making a lot of like a poor cat like education initiative. We had like amazing, you know, educate series, which was followed by like hackathons and accelerators. Recently, we finished the poor cut accelerator. We had like amazing projects graduating after the weeks of like hard work. Uh, we are preparing some fun materials together. So lucky, please stay tuned on our social media to see those videos. But fun thing I want to share is like a, you know, the hackathon can bring you to multiple places. Perhaps afterwards, some of you are going to be working at one of the power chain as the main contributor. You will see that, like, you know, a bunch of our alumni is working at different power chain as a DevRel, or they're becoming an engineer. They're contributing to the ecosystem. Maybe some of you become a project itself, so, so that you will be perhaps starting new projects. You're going to come to Accelerator and keep building, and then perhaps you're going to build one of a power chain or amazing killer app. Uh, maybe like a new game in Porkara, there's a lot of different ways to go. And also we know that some of you perhaps like a continuously, you know, staying around Porkara ecosystem as a hobby developer and keep building and maybe sometimes contributing to open source project. We have multiple people has been, you know, uh, working on certain extensions and try to support in community in that sense. So I would say this hackathon, like you will find a lot of your friends who are going to be staying around for like, you know, next journey and building together. Uh, in this ecosystem, there's like a lot of new things to run. If you are a Rust developer, perhaps you already have experience with Substrate, maybe you're gonna learn Ink, or like a, uh, if both of them are quite like unfamiliar topic for you, this is just a great time to start with some templates and we're gonna have like a, a lot of different technical resources to support you there. So uh, um, please uh, enjoy all these like a project we prepared for you. There are gonna be amazing workshops coming along to showcasing what kind of things you can build further in Portada ecosystem. And we are very, very welcome to hear your feedback. Like if there's any new topics you want to learn more, please reach out to us. We are very happy to put all those curriculum together. And finally, what I want to uh, put an emphasis is like uh, everyone, uh, in the hackathon, I see time to time people telling me you will not submit because you feel shy, you feel like your project is not finished yet. Please don't be shy, don't get intimidated by like you know the nature of the hackathon. In the end, finishing a cycle of project is really important thing. So we are very much looking forward to see your project, whatever stage it is. And if you need any help, like I'm sure that Emma gonna be there holding your hands, crossing the deadline together. So everyone have fun and I hope you're going to have like a lot of fun memories from this hackathon. And some of you are going to be perhaps being in the, being ending up as an amazing entrepreneur in the end. Good luck. Thank you very much, Omji. That was um, some very wise words. And yes, definitely to echo that, um, I am here to support you. Don't be shy in terms of submitting things. One thing I can guarantee is you're a much better developer than I am. So you'll pull the wool over my eyes. I will be fooled. I think um, it's just brilliant to, to get a sense of achievement, feel like you've um, achieved something, put something in. Whether you win or not is ultimately not really the goal here. OK, so um, moving on. Uh, what happens during the hackathon? So hopefully everybody here has already already registered. But if you somehow have not yet done that, do make sure you go onto our website and just fill out the form. It shouldn't take more than a minute. And it just means that I can provide you with all the relevant details and be aware of you um, so that I can give you support. Um, the next thing you're gonna want to do is form a team. Uh, it's not compulsory. If you want to hack on your own is completely fair. But one thing that we do allow you to do is connect with people on Discord. So if you're looking for somebody with a different skill set to you, um, do go ahead and um, send send a message saying who you are or if you're look, a team looking for an, um, another member you can do the same thing um, and find people in the space who are willing to work with you. Um, we have lots of exciting workshops coming up. These can be particularly helpful in terms of you know um, specific bounties because they're run by our partners so um, they can give you the help you need. If you attend them live you can obviously 
um, answer, um, get your questions answered. So that is a really great way of getting involved and building up your confidence ahead of, you know, actually submitting something. The final two weeks of um, the hack, however, are dedicated just to building. Obviously, you still get support. So you can get support from me in terms of um, hack practicalities, any questions you might have. You can also get support also through the Discord from our partners. And this is great for more technical um, questions, things specific to you know, the stuff you're building. Um, yes, as I already said, one-to-one -one membership, that'll be me. Um, you can start booking calls with me um, as soon as you've um, got ideas, or even if you haven't got ideas, we can talk about that. And then finally, in four weeks' time, it will be time to submit your projects. Um, and as Omji said, don't be shy about it. And there really is something to, for everyone, as you will see as we get into the bounties. Okay, our support. So yes, as I mentioned briefly, two main types of support. So we've got support from our partners, which comes in the form of the workshops they give and the technical support they give on the Discord. And then there's the support from us at ENCODE. So that's the Discord community as a whole. And you can also, of course, get support from other people in the hack and the one-to-one -one support that comes from me. So do follow me on Twitter, follow me on Discord, whatever it is that you prefer and get in touch because I'd really love to hear what you're planning. Um, and without further ado, let's get on to the exciting part, which is where we hear from um, our various sponsors and partners about the bounty tracks and prizes we have on offer. So first of all is the bounties that are coming from Polkadot themselves. I have an issue with my slides there, sorry. Um, so we've got the best use of Polkadot. So first prize here is three and a half thousand dollars. So definitely something to consider um, submitting for. And very, very simple, any depth categories and infrastructure solutions are eligible. Um, so this is really your opportunity to um, be at your most creative, submit whatever it is that um, excites you the most. All you need is your well-written readme explaining what the project is about and how their implementations were made. But there is, of course, another bounty from Polkadot, um, and that is the first steps challenge. So this is really, really good if you're feeling a little less confident and you're a beginner because it allows you to follow the workshop and use the instructions um, to deploy a copy of the presented project. And you can see all of this information in more detail in the Hacker Pack. So don't worry if it's unclear at the moment. Um, and basically have a go at kind of building something in a more guided way. So I know a few of you have gotten in touch with me to say that you're not sure about building, you're not sure if you've got um, the skills. This is definitely the thing for you. Okay, um, now we will be inviting our representative from Get Block to the stage. So that is Joan Williams, and she will be here to tell you a little bit more about the bounty that they have on offer. Um, so there she is appearing now. Hi everyone, I'm Joan, the head of marketing at Get Block, uh, top blockchain RPC provider and the tech partner of this event. And it's really an honor to be one actually. We're incredibly excited to support the event uh, that showcases the potential of blockchain, obviously. Um, and I think that any hackathon is a challenge to push the boundaries of what's possible in the decentralized, decentralized world. So we encourage you to think big, be bold, and um, collaborate. Uh, as a node provider, I guess that it's uh, logically that we take responsibility to support your projects with the reliable infrastructure for your future building. So what we offer uh, as a bounty price is what we usually offer for accelerator programs. And that would be uh, the first place we get a free and limited access of RPC requests for two months. That's worth um, about a thousand dollars. A support with uh, project marketing and a 20% discount for three 
three months of dedicated notes in case your project grows big and you uh, read need a heavy workload. The second place would get uh, free and limited access for two months and project marketing, including interviews and articles uh, with the project. And you can describe the use case uh, of your project with good blog. And their third place would get uh, free and limited access for one month without the marketing support. And all the teams have to do is um, leave a fuller view of how would they uh, use GitBlog for their uh, adapt development on any platform or social media and share the link uh, of the review with us. So I hope that's clear enough. Um, let's get started, I guess. Let's code, create, and collaborate. Let's build the future of blockchain together. Thank you very much. It's very, very exciting to have a bounty like this on offer. And I hope that this has piqued your curiosity, everyone. So thank you, Joan, for presenting that to us. Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, so uh, we will um, move on to our next um, bounty provider, which is Accurast. Um, so hopefully we will have Pascal from Accurast on the stage in a moment. There we go. Perfect. Um, so if you would like to tell us a little bit more about the two bounties you have on offer here. Sure. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I'm Pascal, co-founder um, of Accurast, and we are very excited to um, host actually two bounties for this hackathon and kind of expands the um, developer experience around Accurist. Maybe for the ones that don't know, a few um, quick words on, on Accurist itself. Um, Accurist is a decentralized serverless um, cloud that leverages mobile devices hosted by the com community um, for compute resources and then allowing essentially developers to deploy their applications onto that cloud. So really kind of the deep end aspect um, that is really being pushed um, nowadays, which is great to see. But what we want to do with um, the, the bounties for the hackathon is um, that you help us improve the developer experience. And I think this is really good that you are the ones in the driver's seat and really kind of see where we can uh, essentially improve that experience when interacting with, um, with Acros. And one thing there is, this so-called no-code Oracle um, onboarding experience, which is that you build up a front end um, that helps us deploy and leverage the underlying Acros technology for Oracles specifically. So deploying an, an Oracle should be quite easy um, because the technology that Acros offers um, allows you to do that. But here the front end is kind of helping more the developer experience to be improved. And for that, we have um, some prizes in terms of um, Acros points, as well as a Google Pixel device, which is one of the devices that um, our community members use to provide compute. And then the other one um, is a bit more uh, generic. This is kind of the best application. So whatever you're building during this, this hackathon, um, when you're working on a, um, a Polkadot uh, bounty, essentially, you can leverage Acros, um, the compute aspect of it, for an Oracle use case, or if you get any off-chain data or whatever compute you want, you can build that into the, um, the, the application and then you are eligible to participate here as well. And there are also some um, Acros points up for grabs. So very excited to see what uh, your um, folks are going to build. And yeah, we will always be there for questions as well in the ENCODE Discord. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out. Happy building. Thank you very much, Pascal. I hope that that has given you some exciting ideas of um, the potential of what you can do um, in, in this hack and also with Accurast in general. Um, and of That's course perfect. Yeah, one thing, sorry to, to jump in that I forgot to mention yes, that I see in the chat. Yes, there will be a workshop session, which is uh, in a week's time with uh, Andreas, our de uh, developer experience. Uh, he will show you essentially what you can do with, with Acarist, um, so you really get an understanding of the full potential there. Yes, thank you. Very, very good point. We Perfect. will be having um, workshops from all of our um, partners that you are seeing today, um, and also um, a couple more. So, for instance, Dennis Soma starting just in about five or so minutes. So thank you very much for that, Pascal. Thanks for um, having us. 
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, so the final um, bounty that uh, we would like to announce is that we will be having a Bifrost bounty. Um, so uh, we don't have all of the information on that just yet, but do keep an eye out because we will be telling you more about that very, very soon. Um, okay, so next up, I just wanted to quickly run through some of these FAQs. Um, I'm basically just going to put them on the screen because I think that I have um, spoken about all of them. But I will say that, yes, you can enter a pre-existing project. Um, you do have to demonstrate that you've made significant improvements to it over the course of the hackathon. But if you're building on something that already exists, that is completely fine. Um, brilliant. OK, so key dates. Obviously, we've got the launch event. And then um, in just five minutes or so, we will be um, starting a workshop building dApps on Inc. Um, and then have many, many more workshops um, this week and next week, which I will show you in a moment on the screen. Um, and then March 10th is the big day. That is our submission deadline. So make sure that you get things in before that point. That is very um, important. And then for those um, um, projects which you know have won prizes, we will be having the finale and the prize giving on Wednesday, March the 27th. So I hope that is all clear for everybody. Um, and then, as I said, oh, sorry, my keyboard is no longer working. These are the workshops that we have planned. So um, we're still waiting on a talisman title, but otherwise, um, lots of exciting things to be getting along with. And as Pascal helpfully reminded me, um, yes, uh, there will be. They are coming specifically from our partners, so you're getting lots of extra information. Um, from them there. Um, okay, brilliant. So here are the next steps for everybody to bear in mind. Make sure you join the Discord if you haven't already. Um, this is very important. It lets you connect with everybody. It's where we put most of our information. It's where you can find teammates. Participate in our workshops. I put the dates um, on the screen just now, but they're also in the hacker pack. So you know, don't worry if you've already forgotten. Um, and build your project. And of course, I am here to support you with all of these things. So if there are any problems, do just drop me a message. I am more than happy to help. Um, yes, as I said, any questions, feel free to send me a message. I'm clearly predicting my own slides. Um, and we do not need to do this because without further ado, um, we can hopefully start pretty directly, I think he is here, with um, Dennis's um, presentation. There he is in the chat, um, so hopefully he will be added in just a moment um, and we can get on with our first workshop. Hey Emma. There we go. Hello, so lovely to have you with us. I'm very excited to hear um, what you've got planned. Um, I will stop sharing so that you can do so yourself great so i will kick it off i guess yes Let me... perfect just a sec so i will just share my entire screen so perfect first uh yeah thanks for having me super excited to kick this off also super happy to see a few known faces in the chat uh always cool to build some stuff uh, on substrate and polka dots so yeah um what i will talk you uh, um, tell you about today how to start build dApps on Inc. Um, I'm Dennis, co-founder of Sio Labs. Uh, we built Inkathon, which is something I will present today. We built A0 ID, which is the official domain name service, also fully written in Inc, uh, running on Aleph Zero, which is a substrate-based chain as well. Um, you can try it out. It's one of the like first Inc production dApps. Um, so if you want to have like a live ink experience in your browser, give it a try. We also have a test net, of course, uh, you can find it in our docs. So before diving into uh, building dApps, let's actually just uh, quickly define what a dApp is. I'd like to start with this. So actually what we are all here for is decentralization, right? So we have to decentralize all the different layers of our application. And that's most often or traditionally a front end and the back end. 
On the front end side, you can decentralize in a couple of ways. You can host your front end on IPFS. Uh, first, you somehow already decentralize it by speaking to the blockchain, accessing data from the blockchain, writing data to the blockchain. You can further uh, reduce the trust assumptions by using stuff like uh, light clients, which are pretty well uh, supported on Substrate already. And then you have to have some backend, some data, some some user data, some business logic, which is uh, more traditionally hosted in some kind of server environment. But in the context of blockchain, this can be smart contracts, pellets. Uh, this can be some indexer network that uh, reads data from the blockchain and puts it in some better variable way. So by decentralizing these two parts, we can actually call the stuff we are building a dApp or dApp. Um, what I will present today is how to build them with Ink, which is a, a substrate based or like a substrate Polkadot native smart contract language based on Rust. These are the networks you can deploy. <coughs> sorry, you can deploy your Ink smart contracts on. You can also, I probably it also qualifies for the hackathon if you just deploy it on your local node and uh, upload the code. And uh, but in in theory, these are the live networks you can use to deploy your smart contracts. First, before diving into uh, some some code or some examples, uh, let's quickly uh, jump or let's uh, quickly have a look at the ink tooling landscape. So there are multiple levels of tools, and uh, the ecosystem really has has grown in the in the recent months. And I would just like to show you on what you what you can use, uh, what you can where you can have a look, and so on. So first and foremost, on the contract level, you're writing ink which is a Rust-based EDSL. You use Cargo Contract, which is a CLI tool uh, for compiling the code or also optionally deploying it. You have some kind of standards like you would uh, on Solidity with Open Zeppelin. Uh, they start with PSP. Uh, PSP22 is like the ESC20, the uh, fungible token standard. PSP32 is the NFT or the non-fungible token standard, uh, ESC721 uh, equivalent in Solidity. You can check the repositories by Cardinal Crypto cryptography uh, out on them. There are like sample implementations you can uh, start using pretty quickly. On the node and deployment side, you can either use Substrate Contracts node, which is like a very small and lightweight solution to spin up a local node and deploy contracts locally, or Swanky, which is a little bit more full-blown and has like a couple of more features. Uh, when you actually want to uh, deploy or have like a uh, uh, some kind of interaction interface uh, with your contracts locally. You can either use Cargo Contract as said. You can use Drink, which is a tool by Cardinal Cryptography, the team behind LF0 as well, where you can have some kind of like uh, command line interface based uh, tool without even needing to spinning up a node where you can like interact with your contracts, read, write stuff. Um, I always like to use Contract UI because I'm like a, a I'm a not physically, yeah, I like to see the stuff I'm doing, so I like I like some buttons and input fields. And that's basically something running in your browser that generates, auto-generates a UI for your contract. So depending on what kind of messages uh, or functions you have, like it generates the respective input fields and some, some nice UI you can use to interact with your contracts. And of course, there's Polkadot.js apps, but I wouldn't really recommend it to uh, interact with ink contracts. I would always go with contract UI instead. Um, on the front end level, you have uh, like basically all tools out there rely on the underlying Polkadot.js uh, libraries, uh, which is Polkadot.js API in this case. Um, this can become a little bit repetitive, a little uh, hard to set up in some cases, uh, and sometimes uh, also a little error prone. So uh, I like to abstract most of the Polkadot.js function functionality away. Uh, I have built, or we have built, uh, our own library for that, which is using Inkaton, which not only uh, have some uh, provides some React-based hooks, but also some uh, framework agnostic functions or utilities you can use to like connect to a node, deploy a contract, speak to a contract, and only a couple of lines of code. Then there is using, or like there was using to some extent, it's still out there, still working, and it's great, but it got uh, deprecated by Parity just this week because, uh, yeah, that's also some great news I would like to share today, or I already did on Twitter a couple of days ago. We decided to, with Parity Technologies, to join forces on use Inkaton and Inkaton, basically the stuff I'm presenting today. So you are really, uh, if you're listening well, you are, you are uh, on the edge uh, with your knowledge about how to interact with Ink in the front end. 
when it comes to type generation or having type saved contracts in the front end, which is uh, optionally, but uh, nice to have, you can use uh, either the type chain polka dot package or ink type chain package. That's also something I'm showing today for the first time. We have integrated type chain polka dot in Inkaton. So it's like basically you don't have to do anything else than using Inkaton as you would. Uh, uh, uh classes and TypeScript for you and you have get like nice auto suggestions uh, by by, the, by your uh, IDE you get compile time warnings uh, and stuff you would have you would have not got before um, and there is boilerplates which is Inkathon which is the stuff I will talk about in the next 20 minutes which is basically like a full stack repository with contracts and front end already set up coupled together and just like you clone it uh, you you uh, execute a couple of commands and you have like your working dev locally and it's also super easy to deploy so that's really kickstarts your development process when you're process when you're going to uh, build a smart contract based step uh, on substrate. So as said, there's the Inkathon uh, boilerplate and there's the use Inkathon library and the boilerplate uses the library under the hood. Uh, those, but those are two separate projects. Uh, it's already like widely used, I would say, in the really successful uh, hackathon series, I would say, also in the Encode hackathon and the uh, um, hackathon just uh, just finished by Aleph Zero. Like, Right now, there are more than 140 uh, dependents on GitHub, uh, more than 250 stars. So it's really somehow uh, um, battle tested now. Um, these are the news I just told you about. Uh, we join forces with Parity on the development and on Inkaton and use Inkaton. So basically, if you decide to build your next big thing with this stack today, you are future proof uh, with that decision, I would say. Let's dive into the stack uh, a little bit more detail. As I said, it's a, it's one repository, so like it's a mono repo. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a repository with a front end and a contracts folder. It's like per definition a mono repo, and uh, I would recommend going with pnpm or yarn, as those package managers work better with mono repos uh, or work at all. <laughs> There's a, a nice VS Code configuration already in there. Versal deployment is pre-configured, but also Docker files if you want to deploy uh, outside of Versal. Um, on the contract side of things, there's uh, Rust, Cargo, and Ink, obviously, to build smart contracts. There's a substrate contracts node and contracts UI. Predefined, it's just like a short script uh, you can execute to open this up, uh, connect it to your local node without like uh, fiddling with it your own. So it's just like some kind of utility helper shorthand. Uh, and yeah, and on top, there are some shorthand scripts uh, I will show you. Like first, there are shorthand scripts for uh, starting nodes, uh, building your contracts. But also there's like a, a script template in TypeScript where you can like easily interact with your scripts in just like uh, very, very low repetitive code, I would say. On the front end side, there's Next.js. It's basically React. You don't have to use the uh, Next.js uh, features. You can just think of it as it's React, but with nice, optimized, and fast development builds. So it's compatible with Pages and AppDio. There's another branch of the Pages here if you prefer that. And there's some basic styling and components in it, but uh, we try to be as unopinionated as possible with this. So you can use uh, CSS, uh, SCSS, uh, Tailwind, which is the default right now, whatever to build your components. And there's Polkadot.js, like, as I said, the foundation to interact, uh, speak with substrate nodes and uh, smart contracts at the front end. On top of it, use Inkaton. A little bit more in depth about use Inkaton. Yeah, it sa saves you 100 plus lines of code. Like, that's not uh, exaggerated uh, even. Uh, it, you can import your contracts only once. And I will show uh, this live in a minute and use them everywhere without like importing metadata and addresses and checking what network you are on. Like, in every single component, you are using the contracts. Uh, you have short ends for gas estimation, queries, transactions, constants for chains and wallets. So, that's like this chain TypeScript file is also a nice place to check out what chains, testnets, and mainnet you can easily deploy on. It's battle tested in production by A0ID, by more than 1,000 users, uh, and supported by Parity. Yeah, um, there is a demo slide missing, but yeah, let's dive into the demo, I would say. Um, yeah, um, let me start with that. If you, uh, like always, if you want to get started with it, I would recommend heading over to inkaton.xyz. 
it's actually a demo of what you will get in the end and uh, you can like use it to uh, forward yourself to the uh, to the github repository which has like a very extensive readme with a lot of stuff uh, how to set it up how to deploy it how to configure it uh, some some details about it uh, so i can only recommend everyone <laughs> I think I think we lost you briefly now for a couple sentences. Yeah, it's always my iPhone that wants to connect. I, I don't know why that ha doesn't happen before. So yeah, README is very extensive. What I just said, uh, just check it out after the call. I can I can only recommend this. But uh, let's just uh, do like a quick live coding session. Uh, I like let's just start with cloning in Kathon. CDing into it, opening VS Code. Now it asks me if I want to use the code, you want to open the code workspace, you don't have to, but if you do, you get some nice stuff as like on the left side, it's split between front end and contracts. And if you open a new terminal, or it asks you where you want to open it. Uh, I'm doing this, installing dependencies. And during or right after the dependency install, it also executes like a very small post install script for you, which basically just creates an empty or a default uh, environment file. We will come back to this as it's pretty important, but also rather simple. But actually now we have everything done. We can run PNPM, run dev, and, and hopefully in a second, we have a live, running dap locally in basically uh under two minutes i would say and now uh you can start like changing the contract changing the front end playing with it learning the different parts and it's really that easy and that quick to to get started and that that's the whole idea behind the boilerplate so uh let's check the structure of the boilerplate out of it as i said as a front end directory and a contracts directory let's have a look on the contract side first because yeah in contracts i guess that's what most of you or a lot of you are here for the contract you will find under source contract name and then there's like a lib.rs rust file which is just the convention of like how you store your contracts in this uh in this boilerplate so uh this is basically how every in contract looks. You have some some Rust module with a uh, with a macro beyond, uh, and uh, there's a, that's just an event definition. That's not not very important. The contract works without that. Then you have the uh, the storage definition struct, which basically oh yeah maybe I should say. Uh, that's a greeter contract. So it basically does nothing else than you can fetch a string. And you can set a string so everyone can set it there's no access control so i can just update the greeting uh test submit wallet should open that sub wallet but you can use any substrate compatible wallet and test it's updated and you also have these nice uh, uh indicators in the, in the bottom right um there's a there are two different constructors they're just uh, the default ones. One is like uh, creating uh, one with hello ink and one you can pass a string. There's a greet message, which is the getter. It, it returns the string. And there's a, a setter message, which sets the string. You can, and the, the, the stuff here is only emitting the event. So basically the function is uh, only one line. Uh, the, yeah, the function is only one line. And that's a nice thing about ink. And I can only recommend checking uh, ink a little bit more out in the, in the uh, ink documentation, use.ink. Uh, that's a nice thing that you can have native tests even if in the same file. And I can run them even inline and like uh, run some test cases uh, within my smart contract file, which is pretty nice. Um, then we have a deployments directory, which is basically you, you don't do anything with it, but it's pretty important because there are not only the metadata JSON, so the IAB, uh, the build artifacts sort of every contract, but also the deployment addresses. And that's done because we can just deploy our contracts here in the contracts directory, and it stores and exports the address for the front end in files named after the network. So this is the contract address on Alif Zero. This is the contract address on the development local node, which is not there yet because we didn't deploy anything yet. And that's what we will do now. How we will do this? We will basically deploy, uh, build the contract first with this build all script. This looks really complicated, but it only basically only runs cargo contract build and then 
passes the files into the deployment directory ready to be imported by the front end so you don't have to do some manual copy and pasting stuff every time so uh, let's just do this let's open a new terminal in contracts run build all uh, shell script you could also run pnpm run build because there's a shorthand package json script for it but you can also run the shell script directly there's no difference compiling rust live is always a wild experience but mostly it works let's see if it does today it's building and uh yeah it works it's it's copied the build files into deployment screeter and this is the new thing i said it also generates typed contract files for you and copies them into typed contracts so if you want to interact with type hopefully back sorry. right now I was yeah. if you could repeat yeah, yeah. that we lost you again yeah yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry it will probably happen again in five minutes <laughs> but uh, i'm happy to repeat that's the thing i just mentioned you have typed contracts in here so you can access them in the front end later in a typed manner i will show you this in a second as well but what do we want to do now let's spin up a local node and connect our front end to it and deploy our contracts so we do this by executing pnpm run node node which basically is substrate contracts node under the hood and also persists the data in the node data folder so you can like deploy your contracts, uh, shut down everything, come back tomorrow, and your contracts are still there and deployed at the same addresses with the same storage. Um, if I want to deploy them, I have to keep this terminal running and open another one. And then I execute pnpm run deploy, which basically just uh, executes this very simple deploy script, which you can also copy and paste or the script template and do your own stuff, interact with the contract in the in a script, in a non-front-end script way in just the Node.js environment. So basically it gets the deployment data from the deployments folder and deploys the contract with the default constructor function. That's like basically two lines of code. And then it writes the contract addresses in this file. We will see this in a second. That's basically this file, that which is the empty. But let's execute the pnpm run deploy now. And we see we have an address uh, in the top. So how can we connect our front end to it? You remember we started our localhost node, but it's like connected to the LF0 testnet because we haven't had running any local node yet. So how do we do this? We go into the environment local file, which is uh, in the front end and local like Next.js users know this file. It's uh, basically where you can put some environment variables. And there you define the chain by a predefined identifier. And readme you will find all the available identifiers. But for the local node, it's basically just development. So let me uh, save this as development. Refresh the page. I don't even have to restart the, uh, the front end. It's just working out of the box. And now you see, if I move this a bit, that's 5DZX, which is the same one we had just a second ago here. And here you see local development. So it was really, I haven't had to do much to connect to the local node and speak to my newly deployed contracts. But as this is a very fresh local node, I also don't have any funds here, which you see in the in the upper right. So, but I need them to execute transactions because they are they cost gas. So, how do I get gas? I click on this shorthand explorer uh, in the lower left on accounts transfer, and then Alice, which is always pre-funded, a pre-funded development account. I can just make Alice send me 100k transfer submit go back or oh, 10k and now you see it like watches live you don't even have to refresh the page and now i can say hello local node submit approve and it's updated so now we have uh, it's that much what it takes you to like have a local running front end app a local running substrate node and deploy uh, build and deploy your first thing contract um the second part or the last part of the workshop is we have a quick look at the front end part of things so you like also understand how all this works under the hood as i said a very important part is the development is the environment file which defines uh, some kind of environment variables for example the current chain which is this is then used in the uh, use inkaton provider which i do wrap around my app in this providers tsx file so I have a use Inkaton provider here. I pass the default chain and I pass the deployments. And this is also what I meant by you only have to import your contracts once. 
So in this file, I'm basically leveraging the nature of monorepos so I can import from Inkaton front end. Uh, I can import Inkaton contracts into Inkaton front end uh, by just uh, specifying it that way. I have the deployment by this contract ID, which are defined in this enum. It's just greeter. If you add the new contract or edit the contract in the readme uh, on GitHub, you find like uh, uh, three places in the code where you have to add your contract identifiers or modify them. And then uh, it just passes these uh, into this provider. And now with the use Inkaton hook, I can use them everywhere. Let's have a look at an example one. We go, for example, in the greeter contract interactions component, which is this, uh, like the, the right part uh, of the demo UI. And you see in the top, use Inkaton, I can import the uh, uh, Polkadot.js API. It's like really just Polkadot.js API object, so you can do anything with it. Uh, you don't have to. Sorry, I'm, uh, I assume I'm, I'm back again. So you can import your active account, which is handled automatically. You can import your active signer, which is later used to execute a transaction. Um, have, let us have a look on, on how we actually fetch the state from the contract and update the state in the contract. So the fetch part is in this, uh, in this hook, fetch greeting, which calls contract query uh, with the greet function. If, when we go back to the, uh, to the ink file, you see the function uh, uh, name was greet, and that's exactly what I'm calling in the front end now. And then I'm decoding the output and setting it. And that's all what it takes. There is an alternative way, like this code is not even needed. It's just extra to show you how to use the very new typed contract. So here you see the greet is basically a string. And if I type anything here, my compiler doesn't know about it or ESLint or, or anything. So this can be a, an error which only shows in production. But with typed contracts, which are now available out of the box in Inkaton, you can just uh, use uh, import the typed contract from the use registered type contract hook. You can read more about it in the readme with your contract identifier and your contract object imported from Inkaton contracts. And then you get, uh, I can't write anything here. It will say it's an error and I get Oh, that was the wrong. And I get autocomplete. So I see I have set message and greet, which are basically the two uh, functions I have in my encode. The setter part, uh, like the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the right, in the lower right, is as simple. You just call contract TX. In this case, it's like a little wrapper, which is called contract TX with toast. It just calls contract TX under the hood, as you see here. This, what, that, what does uh, this do is like just, uh, opening this little toast you see in the lower right here, sending transactions. And if I cancel, it errors. Or if I don't have enough gas, it shows me a message. And if I approve and everything went well, it shows me like a little success. But you, you don't need this. You can also use the contract TX function uh, without this. Um, yeah, that's basically the most interesting parts. Uh, uh, I would say that's enough for the live session today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to come to our Telegram group as well, like that, just inkaton.xyz. And then here on the, on the Telegram button, there's like a, it's like a general ink development Telegram with almost 150 members. So uh, if there's anything you need, if there's something not working with the boilerplate, feel free to open a GitHub issue. I try to be as responsive as possible in the next uh, time during the hackathon. And yeah. Uh, Really excited uh, to see uh, what you guys are building and uh, good luck everyone doing the hackathon. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Dennis, for that wonderful uh, workshop. Very clear with lots of great examples. Um, before we wrap up, does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask um, Dennis about what he's presented? Um, Kent has a question about VS Code extensions. He hasn't asked so, more than that. <laughs> yeah, no worry. Uh, so basically, there are a few VS Code extensions I'm using, like the Ink Analyzer, which gives you some insights about Ink and some .dot environment files. But if you clone the Inkaton monorepo exactly as I showed, there is like an extensions JSON in the settings, and VS Code will prompt you and ask you if you want to install the recommended extensions, and you can just press yes, and then you have them. So uh, it's as that easy to to get my favorite extensions
<laughs> and if you need the demonstration on that again, this will be um, posted on our YouTube very, very soon. So don't worry if you feel like you missed something. Um, we have um, another question, um, like building dApps, what mostly concerns um, are the concerns security wise, I think is what they are trying to ask there. Well, that's a great question. I mean, they are like I, I could give uh, a, a workshop alone on this. Like, of course, you want <laughs> to like decentralize everything as much as possible. You want to deploy your contract with a multi-sig. You want to have some audit on your contract. But I think most of the stuff is nothing you have to be concerned about during the hackathon. The hackathon is really just to like explore new technologies, try out wild stuff, and like if it really there's something that sticks, like you can you can. I don't want to say security is an afterthought, but it's basically not something you should like focus on during the hackathon. Okay, we've got another question. Um, how production ready is the type checking? Because that's a really cool feature, and I'd love to start using it asap. Yeah, uh, like there's uh, like a little concern regarding this, like it, it, it works, like uh, otherwise I wouldn't have uh, embedded it into the monorepo, but the team which initially built this is uh, open, br uh, open brush and it, uh, it's kind of deprecated because they, uh, I think they're not, not continuing it or not really maintaining it at the moment, though it works. But there is another fork of it, uh, which actually is a team. I think it's called, I don't want to say anything wrong, it's PROSPO or something like this. And their, their fork actually, they, they are sure to maintain it and fix stuff. Uh, and I will probably uh, very soonish switch to their fork in Inkaton. So in that regard, you don't have to have any concerns. And also, like uh, you have to ask yourself, how production ready is uh, using non type safe contract interactions because like i think even if there's a bug in the in the type safe contract interactions the chance that you mess anything up with non without type safety is way higher in my opinion um somebody here asks what do you think you can build better with ink than solidity Ah, I mean, uh, that's a that's a very good question. And I think you definitely should check out the use ink documentation, use.ink, which have like a dedicated page on Rust versus Solidity. Uh, I mean, there's also, again, I could give another workshop on this, but like short, like it's, uh, yeah, it's super performant. You don't have to care about some security considerations you have in Solidity, like a re-entrancy attack and stuff, which is just not there in Ink. And you have like uh, a lot more flexibility when it comes to how much storage, you, how much stuff you can put inside uh, some kind of mappings or so. It's like not as uh, as limited in some regards as the EVM is, but generally like you can build the same stuff with it and uh, it's, it's just a tool, so to say. Great, um, lots more questions coming in. So a question from Frank in the question tab. Um, more info on Create Ink app. Are different frame are there different frameworks that could enter the Ink tooling? Uh, yeah, great bringing this up, Frank. It's definitely still on the table. We were like very busy, uh, like uh, to like in the last weeks to like with parity together sort out uh, like uh, or make the decision about the future of use Inkaton and uh, use Ink deprecation and join forces and uh, archive old repos and uh, get everything sorted. But uh, like as now we have decided that Inkaton and use Inkaton is basically the future of the front end ecosystem of Ink. You can be assured that uh, more stuff will follow. As for example, a create Ink. CLI, uh, which like lets you spin up these kind of monorail post structure, like just in a couple of commands at the terminal. That's the idea behind it. But it's probably nothing that will, will happen in, in Q1 anymore. Um, and then we've got, I think, a follow up question here from um, Malik Arjun. Sorry if I'm butchering that, um, following up from the security question. He says, if the core part of um, ADAPT is centralization, which is unavoidable, then how can a decentralized governance be implemented like DIDs or oracles? The core part of DEP centralization, which is the core. I, I don't think, if, I'm not sure if I like, get the question 100%. Uh, if the core part of DEP is centralization, what do you mean by that? I mean, no, you can 
as I said in my second slide, you can decentralize the backend by using smart contracts or pellets or anything. And you can also decentralize the front end by like hosting it on IPFS, by using light nodes, by speaking to the chain and making everything open source is also like a very good security measure. So I think it really has a very big point to it. Uh, Okay, brilliant. Um, I'm not seeing any more questions at the moment. I'll give it a couple seconds if anybody um, wants to type something up. Um, but in the meantime, I just want to say thank you so much for um, coming on and for giving this talk. It's been um, really informative and it's been lovely having you on. Um, and if you have maybe a couple of words of encouragement for people um, about to start hacking, um, oh, we do have a quick question here. How can we interact with our own nodes using Inkathorn instead of Adapt Focus? So uh, your own nodes, uh, like basically, that as I uh, as I showed you, you can use Substrate Contracts node, which is like basically spinning up your own node locally. But this is just a subset of like Substrate, so or, or Polkadot SDK. So you can basically just start a Polkadot SDK, fully fledged Polkadot node if you want to. It just has to have uh, pellet contracts enabled. So then you can basically just uh, uh, access it uh, uh, like I showed you in the, in the samples. It's the same. Um, Arjan asks, um, did I understand correctly that I can also yeah. use it? It's the same question as, as just, and it's the same answer. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's what happens when you're not a technical person. Um, no. Okay, well, brilliant. <laughs> um, in that case, yes, if you just want to give a few words of encouragement to um, yeah. everybody in the chat, um, yeah. and then so, I think we'll say goodbye. Super, super happy to do this. First, like, thank you for setting this up, and thanks for the chat. Like, it's very great experience to have these kind of engaging questions and everything. That's uh, not uh, every time this, so uh, it, it's great seeing everyone so hyped. Um, yeah, engaging words are pretty easy, like the a0.id project I showed you, which is like a fully fledged uh, mainnet smart contract and mainnet dev, uh, powering more than 3,500 uh, domains on the Aleph Zero network, basically originated in the hackathon. So I, and I have never written any ink or any Polkadot.js or anything before that hackathon. So I really just used this hackathon to try new stuff out. Uh, and yeah, it, uh, something came out of it that like I'm working on even one and a half years later. So that really is some something I think which can be encouraging for every one of you. So uh, just, just build something great and uh, try to make it stick. Thank you. That was very motivational. Um, yes, I would like to echo that. Thank you very much for being so engaged in the chat, everybody. It's been a really nice discussion and a very lovely launch. Um, do get in touch with me, as I said at the beginning, if you have any questions about um, the hack or if you just want to tell me what you're building, I'd be very curious. Um, and in the meantime, do stay tuned for all of our future workshops coming up. Um, so yes, without further ado, I'll let you all get on with your evenings or whatever your time zone is. Um, yes, yes, and I've put my Twitter in the chat if you wanna um, click that link. Um, and yeah, have a lovely day. Um, thank you very much everybody and thank you again to Dennis.